There are a variety of specs that a given SSD's info sheet or listings on a retail site like Amazon or Newegg displays when you're looking for a new solid state drive and it can be pretty overwhelming. In this video, I would like to tell you about the features of any given solid state drive or SSD that I find most important to look at. Regardless of form factor, the specs you should primarily focus on include whether a given solid state drive has DRAM cache, how many levels or bits a given drive's NAND cells utilize, abbreviated as MLC, TLC, and QLC. Yeah, those abbreviations. And when it comes to QLC drives, the size of SLC or QLC and SLC mode cache available. Also, a drive's endurance rating, known as TBW, or terabytes written, is kinda important, but only generally. That's because as you start to understand the differences of differing types of NAND, you'll see you can generally guess the range of speed and expected endurance of a given drive. Even then, endurance ratings are a minimum, and a lot of times, failures of good drives are anecdotal more often than not. Lower quality drives, though, but let's talk about DRAM cache. DRAM cache, in my opinion, plays an important role that hopefully becomes more clear as I tell you more about it. First, you may have heard of DRAM in the context of regular system memory, and yes, it's exactly that. DRAM cache is a memory chip soldered to a SSD's board. If I can describe how it works concisely, NAND flash memory is slower than DRAM and is much more prone to wear relative to DRAM because of its chemical composition, exposure to electricity, and, uh, quantum tunneling. <laughs> this involves applying voltages to a floating gate made of a metal oxide semiconductor insulated in a dielectric material, and electrons eventually finding themselves on the other side. So, yeah, this is quite the rabbit hole to go down, and it's a number of topics to maybe cover another day. Hard drives use an actuator arm to produce an electromagnetic field that records a single bit of data on a platter. In contrast, NAND is composed of a unit known as blocks, and those blocks contain many cells, which can contain 1 to 4, and soon 5, bits. Not only that, but if you want to write or delete even a single bit, an entire NAND block, many, many bits, has to be deleted, then rewritten. This is where where leveling comes into play. Where leveling is an algorithm included in SSD controllers that makes sure that data being written and deleted to the drive are dispersed evenly across all of the NAND cells, and that given cells aren't being written and deleted too, too often, because if that uneven wear occurs, NAND cells in the drive would be rendered useless in a very short amount of time, and before long, there wouldn't be enough cells to write to on the drive. So, maybe think of this feature as a sort of automated tire rotation for the trillions of, uh, mini car tires on your SSD's NAND chips, trying to prevent wear from exposure to rogue electrons that find themselves on the other side of a NAND cell's inhibitor barrier. Okay, okay, I'll stop there. But back to DRAM caches on SSDs. Coupled with a uh, SSD's controller, DRAM is able to act as a fast, resilient storage for data that is being written for the first time to the disk, or to hold data being moved around by a wear leveling algorithm. There's a ton of functions housed on the chip's controller that utilize the DRAM cache, and the operations vary based on the controller maker and the manufacturer of a given drive's NAND. Then there's the address mappable table, which could be contained on the NAND memory, theoretically foregoing the need to have a DRAM chip. This happens with DRAMless SATA drives, while DRAMless NVMe drives use a host memory buffer, where a system's memory is used for the drive's caching functions. But changes to this table will be recorded slower. DRAM is much faster than NAND flash memory, remember? And all of the Writing and the leading to the table will accelerate wear of the drive's NAND memory. DRAM is much more resilient than NAND memory, right? Remember that too? So, in conclusion, I think you should buy a drive with a DRAM cache, because it will generally extend the life of your SSD, and because of the crashing market, good drives with DRAM are only a little bit more expensive than drives without DRAM. If you find this video informative and helpful, hmm. please give it a like, consider subscribing too. The number of bits that a given NAND memory cells can hold determines the speed, quality, and relative expected endurance of the drive you're looking at. The more levels, or bits, that occupy a cell, the slower access times become, 
and the more rapidly a given cell is prone to wear out. SLC and MLC are the highest quality NAND, but because of the cost, these higher quality, faster types of NAND are used more in enterprise and data center applications. TLC or triple level cell NAND make up the bulk of the consumer market and QLC or quad level NAND is gaining a foothold in the market. While early adopters of solid state drives might have been skeptical of TLC NAND's entry into the consumer market a few years ago, it turns out TLC NAND has worked great for consumer needs, as well as needs exceeding those, such as high definition video editing. TLC NAND offers a sufficient balance of reliability and affordability, while the perception of QLC can be iffy. Quad level cells NAND uses cells that contain 4 bits each, and has 16 voltage states in each cell. Because these are 4 bits per cell, it takes longer to access a given bit. And while you can fit more data in less space, a given cell is accessed more often than cells in a triple, multi, or single level cell, subjecting each cell to more wear in a shorter time frame than higher quality chips. All of this makes QLC sufficient in some applications, but also makes it totally inefficient and inappropriate for others. Dynamic SLC caching, which is a feature found on TLC and QLC NAND, temporarily uses a portion of free NAND cells, drive space, on an SSD to operate as single level cell NAND. Remember all the bits a given cell has and what effect that has on the data transfer speed of a solid state drive? Well, SLC mode tells a certain number of your device's NAND space to only store one bit on a given allotment of cells, regardless of how many bits those cells can hold. To maximize speed and minimize wear as this allocated NAND acts as a temporary buffer to help speed up a transfer. This is especially important for QLC drives because this cache helps keep data moving at a much higher speed than what QLC would be able to move by default, which turns out to be slower than a hard drive. This only really applies to large transfers, and if the file transfer exceeds the size of the allotment of free drive space acting as SLC cache, the portion of the file transfer that exceeds the SLC capacity will slow down significantly. So, by now, you might have inferred that QLC NAND is great for file storage, and you'd be right. It can also work fine for hosting an OS and for general home computing. What it isn't great for is video editing and activity that can easily generate very large files. TLC is fine for all of the aforementioned uses because it moves data much faster than QLC, and it's higher endurance. But good TLC drives with DRAM cache are generally a bit more expensive. Oh. And what can help QLC further is a DRAM cache because, again, moving the cache functions to DRAM will help with sustaining higher speeds and reducing wear to the drive's NAND. So that wraps up what I wanted to say about SSDs in this video. I didn't want this video to get too long, and you may be leaving this video thinking that there's a bit more nuance to the topic. And I agree. If you like this video, please leave a like. And if you want to hear more about SSDs from me, because there's so much more to talk about regarding this topic, tell me down below in the comments. That's all for now. Until next time.